Let's open our Bibles to the book of Jude. The book of Jude. We began the book of Jude last week. We looked at verse 1. We saw the author is the half-brother of Jesus. And he calls himself a bond slave of Christ, which is so wonderful. Here's a person that uh, told Jesus he was crazy and uh, didn't believe in him according to the Bible until after the resurrection. And he is writing this to a group of people wanting them to stand up and to stand strong on God's Word and the doctrines of God's Word. And we're going to see that starting next week. Believe it or not, we've gotten to verse 2, and believe it or not, we're not going to get out of verse 2. And if you look at verse 2, you'll think, what in the world is there? It's a very short verse, and uh, in my studies this week, I thought about skimming over it, and uh, of course we had our class right now, uh, last uh, Friday night, and uh, reading the the textbook, some crazy man wrote that textbook and it said, don't skim or skip over anything. And uh, so I guess I need to take those words to heart, don't I? But I started looking at this and I mean, it's just an introductory, just a greeting. Look at verse 2. Uh, but there's so much there and I, I couldn't get past it. It says, mercy unto you, verse 2 in chapter 1, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. It's simply a greeting. He's telling these people these things, but there's so much power in that when you see that we have those things uh, available to us from God. Now, he says three things. He says mercy, peace, and love, and then he says let those be multiplied in your life. Those are the three things we're going to think about today. Mercy, peace, and love, and if we are allowing them to be multiplied in our lives. Uh, To be a child of God, you have to have mercy, peace, and love. If you've not received these three things, you're not a child of God. You think about it. The Bible says that God's mercy, what we don't deserve, is available to all. The Bible says we are all sinners, but God is merciful. He sent His Son to die in our place, and His mercy is available to all. Have you received God's mercy for your life? Then the next one is peace. The Bible says, I'll read you a verse, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God provided His Son Jesus dying in our place, and the Bible says all we have to do is place our trust, our faith in Him, and we can have peace with God. We'll talk more about that. But there again, you have to have that to be a child of God. And then finally, love. Uh, I hope I don't have to preach much on that. Uh, Do you know you need God's love? The Bible says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So you see, these three, three are absolutely necessary for our salvation. But please notice, He is talking about letting these be multiplied in our life. The word multiplied there means to be filled or to literally overflow in our life. That's where I want to start today and ask you, are these three overflowing in your life? If you're a child of God, you've received these three, but sometimes I'm afraid some children of God, they kind of sit right there instead of allowing these things to overflow in their life. Uh, Maybe I should ask it this way. Are you a happy Christian? Only happy Christians have these overflowing in their life. In other words, if you allow these to overflow in your life, you will be a happy Christian. Have you ever been a miserable Christian? That's when these are not overflowing. Uh, Y'all know the psalmist when he says, my cup overfloweth. We're going to see how to make that cup overflow today. That's exactly what that word multiplied means. How do we allow these things to fill up our lives? Well, let me read you a verse. Uh, It's actually the opposite, but this is what Jesus said. By the way, as you look at this, can you see, even though this is just a greeting in the letter, Jude's prayer for these people was that mercy, peace, and love be multiplied in their life. Can you all see that? He was wanting that for his readers. He was wanting them to have this in their life. Listen to what Jesus said. Because iniquity shall abound, same word, it's going to overflow. Because iniquity shall be filled up, the love of many shall wax cold. 
He said right there, because iniquity, and by the way, he was talking about the end times. Because the world allows iniquity to overflow. Look at, look at one of these as love. He says the love of many will wax cold. In other words, if we allow iniquity to overflow in our life, these three won't. Anybody know what iniquity is? The word iniquity simply means to violate God's commands. That's it. When we go off of what God tells us to do, the more we go off of it, the more these three diminish in our lives. The more we listen to God, the more these three fill up our cup. <clears throat> uh, what you fill your life with, everybody listening, this is profound. What you fill your life with will shape who you are. What I mean by that, what we watch, what we do, where we go, what we hear, what we say, who we hang around, all of that is going to shape who we are. And I will tell you this, it will change you sometimes very quickly, but sometimes it will change you so slowly you don't even know you're changing. You mean what I watch and who I hang around and the things I allow myself to say and do will actually change my heart? Yes, it will. You remember the psalmist when he said, I have hidden God's word in my heart so that I might not sin against God? Y'all know that verse? Think about it. He put God's word in his heart, in his mind, and then sin left. Well, what happens when we allow the world to fill up our mind? Think about right now what you fill your life with. Jesus said, when iniquity abounds, fills up, the love of many will wax cold. How much influence do you allow the world to have in your life? Now guys, there ain't a one of us that don't allow the world to influence us. Amen. But you think about the comparison of how you allow the world to influence you and how you allow God to influence you. Just think about little things. How much we spend watching TV. How much, sorry brother Scott, I won't get on your industry very much. How, how much time we spend around people that probably don't uh, talk the right way and say, say things the right way. And then think compared to that, how much time we spend at church or in God's Word. Now which one are we allowing to influence us more? The world or God. Whichever, whichever you fill up your mind with, that's going to be who you are. Brother Paul Goodwin uh, had a good illustration. I, I use it, I've used it my whole ministry. I still use it. I still think about it all the time. And, and it's very scriptural. He said, you have two dogs living inside you. A big black dog and a big white dog. Y'all probably heard me say this before. Uh, one's your sin nature, one's the Holy Spirit of God, if you're saved, okay? You have these two beasts inside you. And he said, you know which one's going to win? Whichever one you feed more. How many times our spiritual side is so weak because we don't feed it? And we fed that worldly side and fed it and fed it fed it. It changes who you are. It changes what you're going to do. Do you want these things filling your life? Let me, let me just ask you as you, go through, as you go through these, think about it. Who in here wants more mercy in their life? Y'all know what mercy is? It's a desire to help someone that's in trouble. It's a desire to give someone something they don't deserve. How many of you want God to have a greater desire to help you? When you call out and say, God help me in this situation, how many of y'all want more help from God? There's number one. Peace. How many of y'all want more peace in your heart and in your life? And then the word love is the word that many times is translated charity. Again, that's giving someone something in need. How many times do we want God to come to our rescue and to love us and to help us? How many of you want more of these things in your life? How many of you want these things multiplied in your life? How many of you want to know how to fill up your life with these things? Have I caught you yet? God's Word tells us. But again, guys, if we fill up our lives with all kinds of other things, it's not going to happen. Y'all turn back to 2 Peter. We just went through that. I'm going to do this very quickly. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. 
I hope you remember these. We, we're not going to get in depth at all because we went word by word through this. 2 Peter chapter 1 and look at verse 2 through 8. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 through 8. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 through 8. <clears throat> Grace and peace be multiplied. Everybody with me? 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. I'm waiting on y'all. What does it say? Through the knowledge of God. Whatever you fill your mind and heart with is going to come out. Amen? Right here he says grace and peace. I already asked you how many wants more peace in their life. You fill your life and your heart with the world. Have you, y'all heard the, you reap what you sow? Y'all heard that, right? You sow the world into your heart, what's going to come out? Is peace going to come out? Or chaos? There's a lot of miserable Christians because they're not allowing the right things in their heart and their mind. Right here, look what he says. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of God. Verse 3, according as His divine power has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. What does it say? Through the knowledge of Him. In other words, through God's Word, you have everything you need to gain life with Him and to be godly. Do you believe there is power in God's Word? I hope so. I hope that's why you're here today. Guys, there's a reason that every time we come here, we open God's Word. It will change our life if we let it. If we trust it and obey it, it will change our life. It will give us more mercy. It will give us more peace. It will give us more love. Do y'all believe that? Do we allow enough of God's Word to go in? Look down to verse 5. And besides this, 2 Peter 1 and 5, Giving all diligence. That means work at it, right? Add to your faith. Virtue. That's moral excellence. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, temperance. Goes all the way down, all the way through charity. Y'all remember going through all these things? In other words, after you believe, after you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then he says give all diligence to add to that faith these things. You're going to have to start putting stuff in. Amen? How many of us work at our spiritual condition? How many of us put even close to the same amount of godly things into our heart and mind that we allow the world to come in? Guys, even as a preacher sometimes, I would be convicted if I put the time period up next to God's Word in the world. How can we expect to be filled with mercy, with peace, with love if we're allowing other things to fill us all the time? Look at verse 8 there and then we'll go back to our text. For if these things be in you and abound, there's that same word, if they are overflowing, they're filled up in your life, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will have that joy, you will have that peace, you will have that mercy, that love, all those things and you'll be a productive child of God. I'll tell you this, when you're miserable, you're not a productive child of God. Y'all turn back to our text. You ever been around somebody that that whines all the time or gripes all the time or has always got something to complain about? Number one, I'll tell you, they're a miserable person. They're not happy. And number two, I'll tell you, they're not doing much good for God either right then. Now let me get convicting. Have you ever been there in your life? Guys, I have. I have behind the pulpit before been at that point. Don't you want to be filled with good things instead of bad things? We're going to see how. Turn back to our text. It's your and my responsibility to add these things in our life. Sometimes I think what we do, we get to some of those points in our life and we go, God, fix this! And we want Him to zap us and boy, we're happy again. Isn't that what we want? Wouldn't that be great? Do y'all remember when the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. 
did he increase their faith right then? He did by allowing them to go through a lot of tests <laughs> and a lot of trials. We want that instant fix and we want God to do the work instead of us doing the work. Peter said, be diligent to add these things. It's our responsibility. I'm going to again ask you, how much influence do you allow the world to have in your life and then how much influence do you allow God to have in your life? Uh, Simple illustration. If you put trash into your mind, roses aren't going to come out. Amen? Now let's look closer at these three. Go back to our text. Mercy. When you look a little deeper at this word, uh, and I already told you this a little bit, it means a desire and a readiness to help those that are in need. The, the base word means giving somebody something they don't deserve. But the idea here is a desire and a readiness to do that. A wanting to help people that don't deserve help. And I'm going to ask you again, do you want God to want to help you when you don't deserve it? Come on, everybody do like this. When you cry out to God for help, don't you want Him to want to help you? How many of you have ever prayed and got a no from God? If you've been a child of God very long, you've done that, right? It takes a lot of faith to go through that no, but I'll tell you, we want the yes. Don't we? Don't we all want that yes in our life? The yes will only come because of God's mercy. In other words, we're never going to deserve a yes, right? Do y'all know why God says no sometimes? I'm about to answer some of your whys and you're not going to like it. Now sometimes there, there's a, a good reason and it's for your good. But I'm going to tell you another thing maybe no other preacher has told you. Your relationship with God is directly affected by how you treat other people. In other words, if you want God to help you when you don't deserve it, but you don't help other people when they don't deserve it, why should God help you? I wonder if Jesus said anything about that. The Bible says if a man say, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For how can he not love his brother whom he's seen and love God who he has not seen? Jesus said this, y'all get this? If you forgive men their trespasses against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as you have done to the least of these. The word least there means the least deserving. In other words, if you treated them good or you treated them bad, listen to what he says. Ye have done it unto me. Have you ever thought that your relationship to God and His response to you is directly affected by how you treat the other people in your life? God, why won't you help me? Why do you keep saying no? Sometimes it's because we say no. You reap what you... How can God show you mercy if you're unwilling to show mercy? How can God show you love if you're unwilling to show love? Do you need God's mercy? Then why not try giving more mercy? You see, again, we want God to do it, but we don't want to put any of the effort in. You want more mercy in your life? You want mercy to be multiplied in your life? You want God to say yes more often? Maybe you should say yes more often. Here's an answer I know we all know. Do we even come close to God in having a desire to help other people? Maybe that's an area we could change in our life. The number two word in our text is peace. The word means absolute calm. Oh, who wants a heart that is absolutely calm? No worries. I mean, just it's, it's the picture of a lake with no ripples. 
How many of you want a life that's like that, a heart that's like that? It also can mean harmony between individuals. It also can mean prosperity. I'll read you the verse that I gave you before. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The only way to have harmony with God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Without Jesus as your Savior, if you've never called out and asked God to save you through Jesus Christ, the Bible says you stand as an enemy of God. You're a sinner separated from God. It's not because God doesn't love you. It's not because God doesn't want to be merciful to you. But your sin has separated you from God. And He's not just going to say, well, it's okay. That sin has to be paid for. That sin has to be taken away. The Bible says God's a holy God. He can't dwell with sin. Listen to what the Bible says. Having made peace through the blood of His cross. There's the word peace. Having Jesus made peace through the blood of His cross to reconcile. That means being bring back together all things to God. When you trust Christ as your Savior, you are brought back in peace with God. Back in perfect harmony. I'm not going to ask you, but I will say it. How many of you need peace with God? We all do, whether you realize it or not. And it only comes through Jesus. Let's go beyond that salvation. By the way, if you don't have that today, don't go beyond that. You need to start talking to God right now. But as I was preparing this sermon, I thought, you know, peace is one of the greatest, if not the greatest thing on this earth. Peace with God. Wouldn't you say that's the greatest thing that you ever received on earth? Did you ever think that just as a person, just you say, I haven't done that much, just as a sinner, if you have one sin in your life, it's actually before that, but I ain't going to get theological with you. You stand as an enemy of God. He loves you. But you can't come to Him and He can't come to you because your sin is a barrier. There's not harmony. Young person, old person, whoever you are, without Jesus, you stand without harmony with God. And you will spend an eternity separated from Him if you don't call out to God through Jesus for salvation. But you think about that peace with God. Peace between people. Peace between nations. Peace in our hearts. Isn't peace a great thing? Like I said, it's one of the greatest things on earth. Maybe the greatest thing on earth. Right here, Jude says, let peace be overflowing in your life. Who wants more peace in their life? Peace between God. Peace between individuals. Wouldn't it be great if there was just peace? You always had peace in your heart. Every relationship you had, there was peace. Every time you talked to God, there was peace. I'm going to tell you again, you reap what you sow. You want peace? Start giving peace in your life. I'm going to ask you again, do you believe that your relationship with God is directly affected by your relationship with others? Guys, you cannot be close to God if you're not doing right by the relationships in your life. Listen to what the Bible says. What man desires life and loves many days that he may see good in his life? This is what you do. Keep your tongue from evil. Your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. But listen, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Even as a child of God, if you have that relationship and you've come back in harmony with God, you cannot lose your salvation. But listen, you start treating the relationships wrong in your life. Uh, is your fellowship with God going to be hurt? And you may be crying out, God, give me peace. I want peace from this situation. I want peace in my heart. Are you giving peace? Uh, if God said, if you forgive others, I'll forgive you, don't you think the same applies to peace and mercy and love? 
Are you seeking peace in all the relationships in your life? The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. The book of Isaiah says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of Him that bringeth good tidings, that, that publish, y'all want to say it? Peace. Did you know the gospel message is called the gospel of peace? Because we are preaching a way for people to have peace with God. There are many miserable Christians. There's many miserable church members. And there's two reasons. Number one, I'm afraid there's a lot of people sitting in the pew that don't have that initial peace with God through salvation. They're just going through the motions of religion. They've never called out to God in true faith asking God to save them through the blood of Jesus Christ. They're going to be miserable. And then there's others of us that we are saved. But we're not doing right by some of the relationships in our life or some of the decisions in our life. And uh, that means our fellowship with God's a little rocky. You're going to be miserable. The Bible says you cannot love God and not love your brother. Boy, I love God, but I just hate that person. I don't even want to see him. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Don't think that. Don't harm your relationship with God. Oh, God, love me. I know I'm not worthy, but love me. God's Word saying, well, why don't you love that person that's unworthy of love? That gets us to the last word here, love. This is the Greek word agape. I know almost everybody in here has heard the word agape. It means a godly love, an unconditional love. Many times in the King James Version of the Bible, it is translated charity. Y'all know that? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The greatest of these is charity. That's that same word, agape. Charity is reaching out and giving to others that are in need. Y'all know what charity is. And I'm not talking about giving money to the Salvation Army, okay? I'm talking, and I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm talking about giving of yourself. Again, I'm not even going to ask you if you need God's love. For God so loved the world. He reached out to you through His Son. Y'all think about that verse that we all know. For God so loved the world. What does it say? That He gave. There's charity, isn't it? And praise the Lord, He didn't give us money. He gave us His Son. The verse says, so that, what? Whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have ever lasting life. You go on down in that text and it says the one believing is not condemned. The one not believing stands condemned already because he's not believed in the only begotten Son of God. The greatest charity that ever was, God gave us Jesus. Guys, if we are his child, did you know that he reaches out to us daily out of love? Number one, you're kept safe because of God's mercy and God's love. But He reaches out to you daily. I don't know how to say this without just saying it. God wants to love you more than He's loving you right now. And you may think, what are you talking about? Do you realize God wants to bless you more than you're being blessed right now? Well, why don't He? I'm ready. What kid wouldn't say to their parents, I'm ready for y'all to bless me. Just come on and bless me. How many in here that have children and grandchildren love them unconditionally? And you would do anything in the world. Why hadn't you emptied your bank accounts on them? But let me ask you this. Do you not have a desire to do more for them? Don't you? God has a desire to do more for you today in this life and the life to come. You say, well, what is keeping him? What, why does he say no? We go back to that no. Guess who gets in the way sometimes? Everybody want to raise their hand? <laughs> I, get in, I get in the way of God blessing me. You get in the way of God blessing you. 
God loves you unconditionally and wants to do so much. Again, I'm going to tell you, you reap what you sow. If you will sow more charity in your life, you will receive more charity from God. I've told you all this before. I won't stay on it very long. Everything that God has given you, everything that God has given you, He's given it to you for one reason and one reason alone, to serve Him with it. Your energy, your breath, your time, your money, your stuff, everything. Listen to what the Bible says. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time, but if we love one another, God dwells in us and His love is perfected in us. Simple question. Are you striving to give true love in every relationship that God has given you? How many times as your pastor have I told you that every relationship you have is for a reason? Even those thorns in your flesh, they're there for a reason. And yes, God wants you to give love. Uh, I was talking to a church member this week, and Bill knows who I'm talking about, but uh, they were at work and, and uh, they said a, a, a person came in and they had an hour or two conversation there at work about God and, and all these other things. And, and I said, you know what? That was probably what your day was all about, that one conversation right there. We get so caught up in the, well, my school or my, my job or, or got to get this done, got to get that done, got, those are not the purposes in life. Your purpose for today may be a five minute conversation with someone that you really don't want to have. You ever thought of it like that? Even as a pastor, there's been times that I've been so busy. Uh, I know pastors only work two days a week, but believe it or not, we do get really, really, really busy. And there's not enough time to do all the things you want to do. And it seems like when I get the furthest behind, that's when somebody wants to come and talk or needs this or needs that. And sometimes the human enemy is like, well, but then we forget, guys, that may be our very purpose for that day. We think of all the things that we want to get done. And most of those things are temporary. Where every person you talk to in your life, they're going to spend eternity somewhere. Let me ask you, could our life purpose be as simple as this? We're always wondering what we're here for. Could life be this simple? Two things. Get our relationship with God right. Love God. And then number two, constantly live for the good of the other people that God has put in our life, which would be love your neighbor as yourself. Could life be that simple? Could our purpose in life be that very simple? But I want you to think about all we busy ourselves doing. And I'm not saying don't work and don't do all those things, but guys, that's not the main purpose in your life. Uh... I'll praise my father for a minute. He made the highest rank that a uh, non-commissioned officer, is that what it's called, can make in the military. He's not going to wear them stripes for eternity. I bet that won't even be talked about in eternity. Oh, but look what he accomplished. We could go around the room with great earthly accomplishments. Things that we strove for and strove for. But could our purpose really be as simple as those little conversations that we sometimes pushed aside? Oh, I don't like that person. And that's the very reason that you are here today. 
Could life be as simple as get your relationship right with God and get your relationship right with the people in your life? I'm going to tell you it is because Jesus said the whole law, the whole Bible is summed up in love. The Lord thy God, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I want you to turn one place before we quit. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and look down to verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. Ephesians 4 and verse 28. You'll see quickly why we're at this place. Ephesians 4, 28. If you're not there, catch up with me. Let him that stole steal no more. Brother Chris, what are you talking about? Did you, did you realize most of the time when you sin? No, I'm going to change that. Every time you sin, you hurt somebody. Do you realize that? Do you realize that every time you sin, you hurt someone? Does somebody that steals something hurt somebody? Come on. Somebody break into your outbuilding and steal all your fishing stuff, would you be upset? I ain't got money to replace my fishing stuff. Please don't steal my fishing stuff. But rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is, y'all say it, good. Instead of hurting others, you work hard to do good things. That he may, look, that he may have to give him that needeth. Oh, I've worked hard for what I've got. I'm going to fill up my two barns so I can retire and rest. You know, there's something in the Bible about that. Oh, I've worked hard to get my retirement. I'm not going to give it away. Jesus had something to say about that, y'all. Y'all find it on your own time. Work so that you can give it to people. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. What is corrupt communication? Sometimes we think of curse words. Well, that's corrupt communication. What about talking bad about people? You know what the Bible says about this little thing in our mouth? It's the most deadly thing on earth, that tongue. I've heard some terrible, terrible, terrible things come from inside a church house about people. I've heard some terrible things at a preacher's meeting. <laughs> we come here wanting to find our life's purpose. And we find it if we listen. And then what do we do with our tongue? The very opposite of what our life purpose is. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But look what it says. But that which is good to the use of edifying. That means building other people's up. up that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Have you noticed right there in verse 28 he said, Your actions need to be good to help others. Then the next verse he said, Your words need to be good to help others. Again, everything God's given you, even the words in your mouth, He gave you to serve Him, which, by the way, we do that by serving one another. Look at verse 30. This is so powerful in context. I know you've heard this verse before. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed until the day of redemption. Every time I hear this verse, it's about security of the believer. And praise the Lord, it teaches that. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit of God for eternity. He's not leaving. Even when we sin, notice what it says. He's not leaving. But that's not the point of this verse. He's telling you don't grieve Him. He lives in you and He's there for a purpose. He's there to empower you to help people, not to hurt people. And when we hurt people, it grieves the Holy Spirit inside us. It grieves God because we go against the very thing we're on earth to do. Y'all see that in context now? Verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind one to another. 
tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Again, your relationship is directly affected by how you treat others. God said, if you forgive other people, I'll forgive you. Look down in chapter 5, just verse 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. In other words, be like your dad. You say you're God's child, then be like your heavenly father. God is love, amen? Are you sowing love in your life? Finally, verse 2 there in Ephesians. And walk in, please everybody say it, love. As Christ loved us. I'm going to ask again. Do you think I really summed up life's purpose with one word? Love. Could life be that simple? Love God. Love the people in my life. Do what God says. Make sure I'm helping the people in my life spiritually first and then physically. I believe that does sum up our life. That does sum up our purpose. Guys, there's not anybody that can't understand that. It's very simple. Tell me as we come to the end of this message, how are you doing fulfilling your purpose on earth? How is your love for God, number one? Do you have salvation? Have you called out to God in faith, asking Him to save you through the blood of Jesus Christ? You say, well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do better in my life. And I'm trying to be nice to people. And I've come to church today. None of that will bring you back to God. None of it. Well, I want to do a religious act then. Get, get that water going up there and dunk me under three or four times. Let me eat the Lord's Supper. Let me do something. You have to call out to God in faith. Brother Dale said it. All other religions are due. Christianity is done. God already done it. All you've got to do is believe in it and ask for it. But after salvation, I ask about your love for God. Love means a commitment, by the way, an unconditional commitment. How is your commitment for God? How many things do you put ahead of God? Jesus said very plainly, if you love me, Keep my commandments. And how is your love for other people after that? Everything God has given you, He's given you to fulfill your purpose on earth. Your time, your energy, your talents, your money, your stuff. I'm going to ask you today, please consider. Please just look at your life and consider what you're using all these things for. Book of Colossians says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Let the peace of God rule in your heart to which ye are called in one body and be thankful. You don't even have to look back at our text because it's such a short verse. But I want to ask you, is mercy, peace, and love being multiplied in your life? Is it overflowing in your life? Do you need more of God's mercy? Do you need more of God's peace? Do you need more of God's love? How many pray and you want that yes to come? You want God to say yes? Guys, the simple answer is you be willing to give more mercy peace and love. You will reap what you sow. And you'll be much happier. Everybody bow their heads just for a moment. Close their eyes. Please consider two things. Only two things I want you to consider right now as this invitation comes. Number one, are you at peace with God? I'm not talking about a feeling. I'm talking about based on what God says. Do you have a relationship with Him that's in harmony? 
It can only come through the blood of Jesus Christ and your faith in Him. You say, I believe. What do I got to do? You call out to Him. You pray. Asking Him to save you through the blood of Jesus. And He will. He will do it right now, right where you sit. Do you have that peace in your life? You're never going to have peace until you have peace in that relationship. And then, dear child of God, are you a miserable Christian or a happy Christian? Don't you want to be filled with mercy, with peace and love? Then let us pray to start sowing that. Putting more of God into our hearts and more of God will come out. Loving God and loving people. How is your commitment to God and how is your commitment to people? Now's the time we respond to God. That's what invitation is all about. Fathers, we humbly bow in your presence. We ask that maybe there's one today here that does not know you as their Savior. Maybe they're a young person that's come to that age to realize that they are not at peace with you just because they've always been at church. Maybe today they realize how desperately they need the blood of Jesus and they have to take action in calling out to you in faith. Father, I pray if that be the case that they would come today and let everybody know that they put their faith in you. Maybe they need help. Father, give them the courage to come and we'll pray together. Father, maybe there's someone here that wants more peace in their life, but they're lacking their own commitment to God. Maybe it's church membership, which you've commanded. Scripture baptism, which you've commanded. Or maybe it's simply a greater commitment to put more of you into their life through church, through Bible study. Or finally, maybe it's we all need help in sowing these three things in our lives. Father, help us to focus on how simple life's purpose is. To love you and to nurture and love those relationships that you've given us. To treat them correctly. To reach out to them and help them spiritually and even physically if they need even when they're unworthy father because that's what you do for us give us the courage father to make the moves that we need to make today we pray this prayer in the name of jesus our lord and savior amen